Hello, nurses. This is Kevin with NursingCamp.com, and these are my scribble notes on calcium channel blockers and DVAV. See the pines. For my sticky note, calcium channel blockers and cardiac meds. Now, calcium channel blockers, when we're looking at cardiac channel blockers, mainly given for either fast heart rate, hypertension, AFib, a flutter. It's part of the cardiac ABCs. These, where I covered in a previous lecture, where I sent as far as order of priority, where we have A, B, C, C, D, E. And calcium channel blockers fit right around here, C, A, blockers. The interesting the first thing about calcium channel blockers is whenever they're put on a calcium channel blocker, you check whether they're on a beta blocker or a calcium glycoside like digoxin. It's very important because if a patient has symptoms of a decreased heart rate, it's important to recognize whether or not this is because of the beta blocker or the, or the calcium glycoside like digoxin. You can't differentiate which one it is. So that's why in the nursing process, we generally will question those medications um, in an NCLEX style question. However, in practice, you might see that they will be on, on both of them. And that's okay, but in NCLEX world, we question that. Okay, let's get going. Given for AFib, uh, flutter, uh, hypertension, and there's a distinct difference between these two um, uh, calcium channel blockers. And what I'm talking about is, is that that's called DV, um, AV, see the pines. This class right here, DV, DV is uh, diltiazem, like cardizem, diltiazem, and verapamil. Verapamil. That is acute because it deals with um, AV, and the AV is just there because of rate, to think about the rate, because it goes SA node to the AV node to the uh, ventricles and the country five, because then we have contraction, and then that becomes heart rate. Okay, well, these calcium channel blockers work specifically on this cardiac muscle and these calcium channels, and it slows things down. And that's why it's a perfect medication for something like, um, whoop, hello, like uh, AFib, where in AFib you have um, no P wave, okay? So it kind of looks like that. And when there's no P wave, um, they put on a diltiazem, a cardizem, verapamil to convert this into sinus. And a flutter kind of looks like that. Okay. And a flutter has flutter waves. And I call it flutter cutter. See my cardiac lecture on a flutter versus a fib. Okay, so <clears throat> let's cover DV. So diltiazem and verapamil, right? They deal with the heart rate. Where um, the pines, pines I always think peripheral. Peripheral blood pressure. Okay, and when you're looking at the patient and you're looking at the peripheral and amlodipine, for example, amlodipine deals more, more about blood pressure, like Norvasc, where the difference is there has to be uh, a differentiation between the two. And so it's important, especially for the NCLEX, is they differentiate the two different types. Though they're both calcium channel blockers, they work in the smooth muscle and the calcium channels. I always think of calcium as hard. And what happens is, is that um, blocking that calcium makes things soft. And when it makes the things soft, the, um, the vessels are not as tense. And what happens, they start to relax, and then therefore the um, the blood pressure starts to go down. So, a quick run through. When do we hold it? Well, a bradycardia, definitely, right? So if our heart rate is really low, um, we're going to hold that. Uh, AV blocks, that also makes sense because if we're slowing down the calcium channels from the SA node to the AV, um, we question on digoxin and beta blockers. Um, <clears throat> And uh, it's given for hypertension, angina, and um, and uh, for.
for uh, AFib and a flutter. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so let's run through it. A whales. So we talked about this previously. This is how we evaluate medications to see if we have all the content and what stands out. Is it acute or chronic? Well, there is a differentiation between the acute ones, DV, diltiazem, and verapamil, are more acute than amlodipine. Though it's not the first line of medication, people with a peripheral vascular disease, people with problems, you know, out outside with uh, increased afterload we worry about we usually put them on um, calcium channel blockers um, how, how does it work well we talked about that in the calcium channels blocking that contraction and blocking that conduction um, when do we hold well medic uh, if it's DV deltaism and verapamil we generally will hold if um, they're on uh, beta blockers or calcium channel blockers and also will hold um, on heart rates or heart rates less than 60 and um, also uh, systolic less than 90. But follow your policy and procedure. Your assessment will be based on the rate and why they're getting it. Um, and while they're getting it, you're monitoring these signs and symptoms. Any labs attributed to it? Not really. Does it really affect their eating? Um, there has been some studies about, you know, grapefruit juice, you know, causing some uh, complication with um, the uh, pines, amlota pine. So no grapefruit juice with calcium blockers, generally because of um, uh, like amlota pine, uh philodopine, mainly because of um, the interaction on the uh, cell wall. Then also um, eat, can't do that to eat, no grapefruits. And then what stands out? The big thing that stands out with calcium channel blockers is that the calcium channel blockers are, um, there's two different types. There's two different types and understanding that relationship between the two types is the most important. Um, Diltiazem versus uh, amlodipine. Well, my name's Nursing Camp and this is, um, you can follow me on um, on. Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest. Um, I also have my products on Etsy um, where you can buy my books. So if you join on nursingcamp.com, I usually send out your free access to all my items and um, you get a free book with that and a handy dandy thing. Um, that's it. Um, and we'll talk to you next time. Nurse on.